Alright, so for those of you just tuning in, we are going to be doing some good old-fashioned Black Forest on AV2 HD Edition. I'm going to be playing as the Byzantines in this particular match, and this would be the fifth attempt that I've had in the last few hours of actually playing a match of Age of Empires 2. AV2 HD Edition has been, um, not kind to me today, that is for sure, uh, but it goes without saying that the original Age of Empires 2, even on Voobly, is basically just as unstable. So if I don't upload as much as I'd like to, and if I had my way I'd upload once a day, this is why it takes me maybe like three hours to play a match that actually doesn't go out of sync and everyone connects. I would really really like to do a dubstep montage of just uh, a really really horrible one of those Call of Duty frag video style things of just people disconnecting and matches going out of sync. I think that'd be really fun. It might, it might take me a while and it might destroy me as a person doing it, but it's on my to-do list. So anyway, anyway, we're going to do some Black Forest today. I'm going to be playing as the Byzantines because it occurred to me recently that, you know, since my current channel icon, which I guess might be different if you watch this video well after I uploaded it, uh, is a Cataphract from Age of Empires 2, one of my favorite units per se, even though I never really get to use them. My channel only has a few Byzantines videos, and I find that kind of strange, so we're going to try and increase that a little bit, because I do love the Byzantines a lot. Uh, they're one of my favorite civilizations, albeit not my most played one. I definitely, the Britons are definitely close, but I do really love the Byzantines, so we're going to do some Byzantines mumbo-jumbo and see how that goes. Not entirely sure what strategy I'm going to be going for and highlighting in this particular video, but you can find out by just looking at the video title, of course. And you're wondering why this particular match wasn't live streamed, uh, Twitch servers are a bit laggy right now from the League of Legends uh, tournaments and whatnot, so I'm going to wait for that to settle down and be back to the normal, regular live streaming on this coming Friday. I do live stream weekly, of course, so if you'd like to play with or against me, that is the way to do it. <laughs> this particular match was played, of course, entirely between my viewers, so it's a good example of why you should tune in for some fun. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to start with the standard 6 on Sheep, and then we're going to transition to the 3 on the Lumber Camp. Should be good. I'll probably be doing some sort of Fast Castle Age style strategy, not 100% sure yet. I don't know who I'm against or what I'm... Uh, uh, what I'm dealing with a uh, Civ matchup wise, so we'll, be, uh, we'll go check that out. Of course, if you are struggling with the more basic stuff of Age of Empires 2, I've got a lot of tutorials on my channel that you should probably find very, very helpful. Even if you have no idea what this game is, I definitely have tutorials for that as well. So, anyway, I like to get Loom before I hunt my boar. Reason being is in these large team games, man, you never know when there's going to be some of that lag. Ah, uh, he got the first hit. I can't win that fight anymore. And yeah, there's always going to be some sort of slight delay at least, so I like to compensate for that and hope that I don't lose any villagers unnecessarily. Hopefully Gaspoda is not watching. He is. Alright, that's fine. Alright, we're going to go get this boar now. I want to make sure Gaspoda does not try and wall too close to me, but he might... Get a pull off these villagers. Notice how I like to force drop off the food first from my shepherds before I actually uh, start harvesting from the boar. And the reason being is because sheep meat is actually classified as a different type of resource than uh, boar meat. So the villagers will just lose that food to the void, if you will, uh, rather than just simply continue gathering food from the boar. They're considered different types of food, so if you don't force drop it off, you just lose food. <clears throat> You'll also notice that I am only hunting from one. Uh, I'm only gathering from, like, one sheep at a time, if I can't, and uh, the reason behind that is that I don't want to lose any food, because uh, food does decay over time, of course, from these live animals, so... The goal here is, is I want to minimize the amount of resources lost for free. I'm gonna do a bit of that wallop action. Let's see, how's the status on this boar? I think it's about time for the second one, and I'll put down my mill now. Normally, I like to put down my uh, first Dark Age building when I hunt a boar, and then when I get the second boar, I like to put down my second Dark Age building. So, when I hunt my first boar, I put down my mill, and then uh, with the next boar that's coming, I'm going to be putting down my mining camp. I'm going to put only one on this particular mill for now, because, you know, i got plenty of villagers on food, and the Dark Age is all about the food. You want to be focusing almost everything on food. 
Food and wood is the dark age. Of course, your economy is purely dynamic, so feel free to adjust it to meet your needs. I found Go Spot a Scout again. Uh, it's unfortunate that he keeps getting the first hit off, but I should be able to... How's this wall going? Forgot that in the Forgotten they did slow down that wall building just a bit. Just the tip, if you will. Okay, I'm gonna put down this mining camp. Put another villager there. Get another one of these sheep down over there. Uh, put down an emergency house so we don't get housed because I'm managing too many things at once. And playing while talking is difficult. Alright, Gaspada, you better run, son. I'm gonna get housed for like a, a little bit right here because standard uh, stereotypical resonance always gets housed. Alright, he's gonna get that wall off anyway. Bummer! Oh, well, that's fine. Put all those things back over there. Okay, his scout is actually lower HP than mine, so ooh, I might be able to get some free hits on it right here as it runs by. We'll see. Oh, I actually killed it. Foon the bar. Put down another house over there. Uh, notice how I'm also trying to leave room between my town center and the uh, the houses that I build. Just enough space for farms. So that's where I'm going to be building a lot of them. Alright, cool story. That stuff over there. I'm all walled off now, this is good. If you're doing a like 1v1 black forest though, you do definitely want to wall up earlier than I did. Alright, now as my boar finishes, I like to transition those hunters onto deer. Hunt your deer with four, of course. With four villagers, that way your vills don't have to walk between the deer and the uh, and the mill to go drop off stuff. That way they don't have to take multiple trips. Are you going for a fast cast later during this particular match, I think? Oh, Gospoda is the Goths, actually. I could go for some crazy, crazy cheese mumbo jumbo, but I don't think I will. It is Black Forest, of course, so an economic boom is is definitely viable, if not encouraged. The reason being is that, you know, it's easy to defend, an economic boom is incredibly risky. If you're not aware what that strategy is, it's where you try and reach your standard goal, which, no matter what strategy, your goal will always be to reach 100 villagers as fast as possible. And the economic boom means that you're going to try and reach your goal of 100 vills, uh without investing in a military, basically. So you're going to be getting it even quicker. It can be very risky, of course, because without investing in a military before you reach that goal of 100 villagers, you're pretty vulnerable, but on Black Forest, it's pretty easy to defend. So it's definitely definitely worth your while. Hopefully, uh, I can just drop off some of this sheep meat, uh, this deer meat, I mean, and just advance right now. 4.99 food. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> my arch nemesis, missing one food. Yeah, 49 food is my arch nemesis. He's always, he's always trying to screw with me. Notice how, again, you know, I'm, I'm not investing that much in non, uh, non-food resources, and the reason being is, like, you don't need it. If, if you're slow in the Dark Age and you have no idea why uh, you can't keep up with other players, it's probably because you either have way too many gold miners or just way too many stone miners, too many lumberjacks. Remember that your economy is dynamic, you can adjust it to meet your needs, of course. And since I'm going for a fast castle age, which is the first step to an economic boom, and we'll see, I might I might go for some castle age regression, we'll find out. It depends on the situation. But anyway, I'm going to try and get the fast castle age first. And in order to do that, when I hit the feudal age, I want to be ready immediately uh, to advance to the castle age, as soon as possible, in fact. So I'm going to be st trying to stockpile the resources that I need for that, and a fast castle age is just a good strategy on every map. It's probably the most important one to learn, honestly. Uh, castle, fast Castle Age is just a very, very good, solid base strategy uh, that you can do so much with. So anyway, what that entails is that means I'm going to try and get to uh, the Castle Age ASAP. So when I hit the Feudal Age, I want to have 800 food and 200 gold basically right off the bat. And note how I'm already a little over 200 gold so that I don't really need these gold miners anymore. I can go have them immediately build my blacksmith and market, which is the first thing that you should do when you hit the Feudal Age. Always build your market, of course, with more villagers than you build your blacksmith, because the market takes, like, literally decades to build. Although I don't have enough, uh, enough wood for it yet, but I will in just a minute. Okay, these guys are all idle now. We build that, uh, that to your market. I can probably put all these villagers on wood now. And now that, you know, you, you can see that I set up my economy in a way that I'm just... I don't have, like, really much in the realm of unnecessary resources. I have a little bit of, like, 50 extra gold. I could have pulled those gold miners off a little sooner. And I should be ready to go as soon as that market goes up. So, that's the goal. 
And now I'm going to start transitioning really, 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 really heavily into wood. Because, you know, like I said, we want to always, no matter what strategy you're going for, if there's anything I want you to take away from my channel is that, or just my videos and stuff, is that, you know, if you're not performing very well, it's because your economy sucks. So you just need more villagers. If you can't give up with people, that means you just need more bills. Or you're trying to, remember, you're trying to reach that goal of 100 plus villagers as fast as you can. And it's 100 plus, no matter what strategy you're going for, that is your goal for the game, no matter what the population settings are. If they're 200 uh, to 500, you always want 100 plus. You might need more villagers to meet your needs, but 100 is the absolute minimum, guys. You don't want to dilly-dally on that, and in order to reach my goal of 100 plus villagers as fast as I can, I'm going to need multiple town centers. And town centers cost a lot of wood, so I'm going to need to start stockpiling that. You know, so I got that double bit axe upgrade so I can start stockpiling a bit of that. I know I'm going to be putting down a lot of farms, so horse collar is a good idea. And I'll get wheelbarrow and handcart at my town center when I have uh, enough villagers to make those efficient. Wheelbarrow would be like 30 to 40, and then handcart would be like 60 to 80. Because so we've got a watchtower over here, this means that Gospada is up to no good. Which means I should consider a further back wall, perhaps. I might even need to stonewall that, actually, uh, if he decides. Because he, what he's trying to do is he's putting this watchtower here to prevent me from walling up. So I'm going to wisely recognize this and preemptively wall this. Because he might, he, might, he might try to forward that stone mine as well, which he can definitely get away with. Um, <clears throat> then I can strike back if need be. It's not a huge deal. Alright, cartography's free since we're playing on the Forgotten, so I'm going to get that now. Alright, cool. Now I'm going to start putting down some multiple town centers right now. I like to put my town centers next to wood and, uh, like, wood absolute minimum. Because, you know, they're a universal resource drop-off point. So you should abuse that. Always build your TCs with multiple bills, of course, as well. Uh, write it on the stone. Put down another TC. Yeah, well... I'll get that stone in just a minute, and then we'll put down some more TCs. <clears throat> yeah, sorry if I'm uh, coughing a little bit. I'm a little congested, uh, a little sick right now, but we'll get over that. That is for sure. The show must go on. Put down another house. Don't want to get housed. All right, should have like yeah, I should have enough stone now. Good, good. Put down another TC. I don't want to put it near the front of my base unless I have to, because I know that he uh, has aggressive towers up, so I'm going to wisely recognize this and not put a TC right here. Because it's really tempting for me to, but I, he could just put a watchtower right here. You want to put your TCs next to as many resources as you can, if possible, but preferably always would if you had to pick one. And yeah, remember that your economy is dynamic, of course, so, you know, gold miners don't have to mine gold all game and whatnot. You just you put, uh, you put it to your needs, basically. I always like to spawn my bills based on, uh, I always like to spawn them on wood. That way, uh, they don't spawn idle. And it's all about being efficient, guys, so you just don't want any idle time, if you can avoid it. I mean, the AoE 2, there's a lot to manage, right? So, you might as well just have your villagers spawn on wood and you can just take them off. That's your needs. Yep, and now I'm just gonna start making my economy really strong, and I'll transition into a military as soon as I am threatened by Gospada. I should, uh, the walls, of course, you know, they're not designed to prevent an attack. They're just designed to provide ample warning. So, my walls here are just, uh, designed to give me just enough warning so that I can start investing in a military as soon as I get attacked. But in the meantime, I can focus entirely on my eco. Which is exactly what the doctor ordered. And yeah, of course, if you can't afford villagers either, you know, just, just use your market to adjust your eco if your eco is not super strong. The H and C hotkeys are also pretty, pretty uh, helpful. H to select a town center. Uh, you can use to cycle through them like so. And C to create a villager. Those are just the default hotkeys, though, so feel free to use whatever works for you. Alright, I should start mining some gold now, of course, because I am going to want to advance the Imperial Age. The goal is around 30 minutes. Make sure to have your in-game clock on, guys. F11 is the default hotkey for that. Alright, you guys are done with that. I can put you all on stone. You can maybe build me a house or two. Okay, cool. 
I usually want to advance based on the in-game clock and not, uh, sorry, not, not on the in-game clock and based on population, but through these things like the Imperial Age, if you're going for some sort of economic boom, 30 minutes is about your goal, somewhere in the 30 minute range, 30 to 35. You don't want to be too much slower than that. But with like the Dark Age, you know, you're going to be advancing from the Dark Age at different populations based on whatever particular strategy you're going for. And in this case, you know, I was going for a fast castle age, which means 27 population is really, really good. Because the Dark Age is, is the economic foundation for the game. That's when you are uh, setting yourself up for whatever strategy you need to do. And I'm going to need a slightly stronger eco, so I'm going to want to sit in the Dark Age uh, longer so that I can stockpile 800 food and 200 gold while I'm advancing to the Dark Age. The longer you wait in the Dark Age, the more, you re uh, the more villagers you can get and the more resources you can stockpile while your town center is inevitably idle. I'll put a TC over here, I think. I can surround that farms really easily. I would put it closer to the wood line, but I've got two TCs next to the wood line right now. So I'm probably fine on that on that point. Uh, I'm just, it's getting to the point where I'm slowly considering a uh, handcart. Handcart's looking more attractive. But I'm going to have to stockpile those resources first, of course. I'll start moving some of those guys over there. To sort of saturate this new TC with farms. Fast Castle Age is like the most important strategy to learn, honestly. It's very good in every single map. It's the kind of thing to get on lockdown. If you're struggling, it, it, again, it's probably because your eco is too weak. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of new players will make the mistake of trying to strengthen their military by uh, not spending too many resources on, on, our, uh, on our villagers, but that's uh, ironically going to only weaken your military. What you want is, yeah, you need a strong, you need a strong economy first, otherwise you can't do daily squats. So don't forget, 100 plus villagers. Ideally, it'll, your villagers will probably end up being like half of the total max population of, uh, of whatever settings you're playing on. This is a 300 pop game, so I'm going to be going for about 150. Alright, it's about 24 minutes, so I can start considering putting down my castle age buildings, like a university. University is starting to sound appealing. Okay, and handcart is is a thing now. Okay, this TC is almost done with his vill, so he can go get handcart. Does it fit the 60 to 80 villager mark? Right, cool. Basically, like with uh, with your eco, it, it, you get you'll get a feel for it as you play more. But really, if when you're making military units or you're like building stuff and you're just running out of resources, that just means you need more bills on that particular resource. It's really that simple, honestly. It really is. Like if you're making a bunch of pikemen, right, and you're running out of wood, that means you need more lumberjacks until until that stops happening. It's pretty straightforward in that regard. Economic boom is pretty, pretty risky, but it definitely pays off in a long, in a long run. We, of course, have plenty of other videos of different strategies if this particular strategy bores you, but definitely ends up with some pretty exciting Imperial Age Wars as well, and it does pay off in Black Forest. I like Black Forest a lot because I believe it's a little more, I guess, balanced per se than other, uh, than other maps like Arabia that heavily, heavily favor things like the Huns. Because on Black Forest, you really get to see the, the full potential of every Civ, since most people either go for a boom or some sort of fast castle age into aggression then, but feudal age aggression is a little less common. But I do have videos on that topic if you want to see uh, how those work. Alright, I should be pretty pretty much ready to advance uh, in just a moment. I'm going to probably sell a little bit of wood. I'm going to advance at this particular TC, which is why I wasn't queuing any bills. We're good. Oh, I forgot, I was the Byzantines. Right, it's cheaper! It's cheaper. It'd be definitely hard to play at your best when, uh, when commentating, that is for certain. I'm not doing half bad, I'm not doing half bad. Although, uh, lucky J34, though, is, is kicking mucho, mucho butt right now. Now that's a score. Oh my goodness, this, uh, stone miner lady, she is bugged. Can you go put her somewhere else. I'm thinking since, you know, I don't have enough, uh, I, don't, I barely make cataphracts because they're, uh, 
They're expensive and they're a steep initial investment, so maybe this time we'll uh, experiment with those. I am right next to the Goths, so if this is a video for Cataphracts, well, I'm not really going to get a better opportunity, am I? Actually, yeah, I'll just have this guy build a barracks. Put down some fortified walls. My aggression might be a little late, because I'm going to be considering investing in the Cataphracts are quite a steep initial investment, but they are extremely powerful units and extremely badass looking, if I do say so. I eh, probably have enough TCs. Oh, that stone mine is in a is in a really stupid location. Yeah, well, we'll roll with it. Yeah, the mining upgrades are really not very important. You can delay them until uh, until the castle age, definitely. Okay, cool beans. Oh, the stable. I'm not gonna not gonna go for cataphracts right off the bat though, but it's definitely gonna be what I'm investing uh, investing in. Cause they're so bloody expensive. Okay, cool. I can put down a castle now. Don't want to put the castles in trebuchet range. That is like noob mistake number one. Absolutely game throwing. And uh, newer players make the mistake so often, where they just uh, they just put their castles like at, right here, you know, like right at the front of their walls, and they're just like. Please, please, enemy team, trebuchet me. I'm so vulnerable right now. And it's just so silly. Castles are so expensive, guys. You're just burning 650 stone. You do not want to make them uh, in a place that they're easily trebbed. Because castles are a great way of preventing yourself from getting raided uh, by, like, uh, enemy enemy cavalry, which is just inevitable in AoE 2, right? And that's a great way to lose the game, is if you are not prepared for that. So please, for the love of God, uh, unless you're going for some sort of uh, castle age aggression with a forward castle, or you're you're sure you're able to defend that castle, do not put it in, in an area where it's easily trebbed. Like if I was if I was taking over his base and I wanted to put a castle in his base to uh, hold that line, that's fine, as long as I know that I can kill any trebuchets that come and try and stop me. I'm getting the padded archer armor because I'm going to start with hand cannoneers. I think. I'm going to wait for that chemistry upgrade. I have no pressing need to make troops right now, uh, even though I could. I'm just going to wait until I get that chemistry upgrade, start making some bombard cannons, and start threatening him. That's the goal here. Yeah, I like to put my castles in a location that protects my eco. Because I, I don't like getting raided. Uh, getting raided is a... is a path. <laughs> It's a good way to turn around the game, but you know, I don't want them to turn around the game. I want to, I want to win this particular match, so that's the goal here. Oh yeah, my 3DS capture card did arrive in the mail. Pretty excited about that, but you know, do keep in mind that as long as AOE 2, uh, as long as there's still demand for that, and as long as the game runs, I will still, of course, be making videos on that, so I uh, have no concern. But in the meantime, you know, I do like to keep my uploads going, and I am a huge fan of Pokemon, uh, so expect some of those on the way. I can start producing some bombard cannons and siege them. Ideally, if you're not going for what I'm going for, like uh, with uh, hand cannoneers and whatnot, you would attack a little sooner than I did, but uh, that's what I have chose to go for at this particular time. So I have delayed my aggression just a little bit to make the initial attack much scarier. All right. I think I'll go uh, this direction. There's no reasonable location to put this gate. So I'll roll with that. People are advancing. How's this going? Here comes the aggression from Lucky J. Sounds good to me. Wow, I've queued up a lot of bombards. I don't need three queued up. Yep, and this also protects the trade line as well, which will be nice. The front half of my base is in a rather horrible situ uh, horrible position, so not really too concerned with that. Alright, let's get in the attacking mark. Not as fast as I'd like it, but it's definitely going to be one scary, scary attack, that's for certain. Let's see what's going on over here. Yep, the attacks are coming, everybody's at the Imperial Age, and the war begins. So, yes, if people's scores are lagging behind... Oh my goodness, that guy, orange on our team, is lagging significantly behind in the score department. Wanna know why? 
Villages, man! Where's your villas? You only have one TC. Villages are always the culprit. Villages, they're your friends. How much is, uh, Logistica? Ew, that's expensive. But, you know what? I'm gonna go for it anyway. Shade is here. Shade, my arch nemesis. Actually, 49 food is my arch nemesis, but yes. Ah, he's getting headshots on my guys with his stupid trebuchet. I'll have to take that out. Okay, uh, fire ships have one range. That's that's so useful to me right now. Not really. Oh my. Okay, ooh, I got my cataphract out. We did it, guys. I've lived up to my channel's icon. I gotta put down some markets and work on that here trade line. Oh, there's a castle there. Well, let me kill this gate first. I'll kill the gate first. Ooh, nope, not today. Put some of you guys just uh, on wood. I've, I've hit the pop cap, so. In terms of houses. I'm surprised. It is, it's good that this match is not actually kind of a sink, because they just tend to do that a lot. And I don't get upload as much as I'd like to when that happens. Um, I guess we get the scale mail, because it doesn't cost gold. And we can start working on uh, guilds, I think. You really work on a. We're going to trade line, that's for sure. Markets. Do I see markets? That's okay. I'll trade with that one. Oh, my guys are going a little suicidal. So, actually, it looks like I'm fine. Shade doesn't look like he's got much guys. I can probably just kill this uh, straight up right now. Oh my goodness! I've got no gold at all. I would say I need more gold miners, except, uh... Oh, I actually do have a gold deposit there. I just hadn't been mining it. I was like, I thought I had only one. So that makes me feel a little better, at least. I can start making units that don't cost gold. Yeah, I'm gonna get that castle, though. Cha-ching! Little victories that count. Lost a lot of guys there. A lot. Way too many for my taste. Uh, you guys can be my control group four, I guess. Not on my watch, buddy. And, uh... I'll probably put another... another castle, like, right here. And put some more farms. Get husbandry. Maybe throw in a few more cataphracts in honor of my channel. I'm gonna need to back up slightly. Yeah, there are two people on this side. I'm assuming Shade's force is gonna be really soon forced to uh, help on this side. Merlin the Wizard putting up one hell of a fight. Really, everybody on the enemy team is. But uh, if you know, the, for the people on our team and the enemy team who are uh, lagging behind in the bills, uh, that's you know that's a problem. They're gonna be weaker because of that. It's all the bills, guys. Why are you just sitting on there not farming? That's crazy talk. Oh, that's where those uh, farm builders went. They're over here now. Cool. Whoa, I got a lot of guys that just masked up here now. This is good. This is good. This castle over here to protect the back of these markets in case they try and blow those up in a last ditch effort. They may okay with that. I have you now! 
Yes, there's the ring. If only there was a castle here. Ha ha, this wouldn't be a problem. But alas, there is not. So yeah, castles. Super, super, super duper important. Hey, yeah, this guy here, I mean, he knows what he's doing, right? Like, he seriously does. Like, he's got, he's making troops. He advanced at a reasonable hour, but, well, he should also build a closer lumber camp up here. But he just, uh, he's not, he's not shooting for this goal of a hundred villagers. He has, he's unaware that this is a thing. This is a phenomenon, and those, those skirmishers are high as fuck. So oh, is this one, okay, I guess that one's just not hotkeyed. Oh, I guess those are not, all not hotkeyed, interesting. Yes, good, good, get them, get them. And once I get my uh, trade card economy rolling here, I can actually make lots of these delicious canafracs. Man, look how safe my base is. I have so many castles, I could start like a castle-based economy. That doesn't really exist though, unfortunately, but I can dream. Whoa, I need a lumber camp over here. Don't want my bills to have to walk for, uh, for days. Okay, cool. I got that castle down. This is good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, these, yeah, everyone's playing really well. Ooh, this is some very, very good rating here. Rating is good. Don't think the teams are particularly balanced. Yeah, usually they're actually stacked against me. You just don't tend to see those games on my channel, just because I don't tend to upload games where we get like mercilessly stomped. But this wasn't uh, that bad of a match. Sometimes I have to make an exception where I, you know, I upload a not particularly close game just because I try to keep my upload schedule rather consistent. Sometimes I have to make that call because, you know, a lot of matches that would be good just sometimes they go out of sync or something, but... Thankfully, the, you know, the uh, teams are stacked a bit in our favor this time, but... Uh, this seems to be a closer match at least. It's definitely not a wash. Usually when these teams are tacked, uh, stacked against me, it tends to be... Has to be a wash. No one likes that. Looks like we've got this side mostly on lockdown. The Celts are definitely pretty, pretty... I mean, sorry, the Goths are pretty good against my uh, particular army comp, so we'll have to keep that in mind. Let's see, I've got my has castles on two. But I do have cataphract support and a bit of the hand cannons. Notice how my army comp is really, really varied. This is important. <clears throat> you can't just mass one unit uh, during the entire game. Even longbowmen, and I know guys, you know, I like to, I liked to mass longbowmen when I was a new player. It's what everybody does. It's a sort of a rite of passage, but uh, it does not make for a particularly uh, effective army comp. Your army comp should be covering the weaknesses of your other units. That's how you know it's a good army. Is there another market over here? That ah, yeah, it's good. So like I've got I've got like skirmishers right and skirmishers are weak to cavalry so I have that weakness uh, covered for example by my halberdiers they're also weak to siege weapons like the uh, ever threatening uh, scorpion mangonel menace so I've got uh, cataphracts for that and um, uh, bombard cannons as well since they suck against buildings so my army comp is super super well rounded in that respect and that's what you're always looking for. And yeah, it might seem overwhelming to have like 100 plus villagers, but uh, you're always going to need 100 plus villagers, but it might seem, I guess, overwhelming to have half of the max pop of the game be, uh, be bills. But a lot of that's going to be filled with trade carts in a team game, and if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you don't need to make as many villagers, of course, but you'd be surprised how many bills you need. Like, I'm constantly uh, producing guys, right? And I couldn't do this without having this strong of an eco. Uh, some people just can't produce as much stuff because they don't have as much... I'm an economy to get by. Oh, I thought I, uh, I thought I researched Alberta here, but I guess I did not. I'll have to sell a bit and get on that. Upgrades really important, like blacksmith upgrades. Oh my god, the blacksmith upgrades, guys. You need those. Yeah, Orange could probably attack with us at some point. Good to see that he has put a gate here. This guy definitely knows what he's doing. He just has a very, uh, very weak eco. Uh, you can tell. You can tell that he, uh, that he understands the game pretty well. But, you know, it can be a foreign concept for some people uh, that they just need uh, need a lot of villagers. It took me a while to pick that up, but that's like the most important thing to improving your game, definitely. And sweet, idle villager Christ. You guys are all useless now. 
So they're just gonna be replaced with, uh, with trade cards. So what other upgrades can I get? Maybe do that chainmail. Always prioritize your defense upgrades when you're going for the um, melee units, and then when you're using ranged units, prioritize the range upgrades. Getting the first hit, super important. And for melee units, you ironically do more damage by upgrading your defense than uh, than your offense because you get to get more uh, more attacks off overall before you die. So it is super, super better that way. Still have no gold at all, right? And you know what that means? More trade cards. Yeah, he could probably attack. You know, he's good. You know, this guy's good. Like, he's getting his upgrades and stuff. He just, uh, he doesn't have the eco, I guess, uh, to, uh, to keep up with the rest of us. Although, if he attacks, you know, he could, he could do some stuff. Yeah. So this is a... <clears throat> This is a pretty, uh, pretty standard army comp as well. Like the Siege Onagers, right? They're, they're super weak to uh, fast units. The ever, oh, he's focusing down my, uh, on my bombards. That's annoying. But intelligence. Anyway, yeah, uh, Siege Siege Onagers, you know, Celts are they're super strong, but they're super super weak to cavalry, right? So you just cover them with a bit of halberd action. But that army comp is actually still weak to bombard cannons. So if the enemy starts throwing those around. Uh, then perhaps you should invest in some Hussars or something. But yeah. Although, of course, uh, Siege Onagers, you know, it goes both ways. They do also counter, um... They do also counter Bombards. Oops. I think I accidently had some guys garrisoning that thing. Get them out of the area. Still need more trade cards, because I'm still running into gold. Someone is buying so much food right now. Okay, well, I guess I'll make more farms then if I'm going to be selling all this food. Alright, yeah. It, it is definitely GG, I think, so... Yes, uh, GG indeed. Very well played from my teammates and the opponents, honestly. They all played really, really well, and they all held out uh, for quite a while. I do like the choice of hand canoes here. Uh, hand canoes very good against cataphracts, although cataphracts also pretty good against them because they cleave, but... Uh, it goes both ways. But I, I still think that hand cannoneers good choice against cataphracts, very good choice against uh, hand cannoneers, and they're reasonable against skirmishers. Although, uh, he might want to throw in uh, perhaps some sort of siege weapons to deal with my mass ranged units. But yeah, everyone played very, very well this game. I got to make some cataphracts, so that's pretty cool. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video, of course, as per usual. Whoa, what the hell? That's a lot of guys garrisoned in that for some reason I don't understand. Yeah, don't forget to uh, don't forget to leave a like rating if you enjoyed this video. As always, I appreciate it. It's a nice, quick, little, easy way to support my channel. Yep. Wow, lucky uh, doing some crazy work over here. Shevchenko as well, wow. Good stuff, good stuff. See, Shinchimax is intelligently recognized that uh, he's going to need some cavalry to charge the siege line anyway, even though he has halberd ears, that's kind of a must. And the Britons, unfortunately, do not get bombard cannons. A good way, a good way to deal with the Celts, though, is to try and prevent them, is to try and one focus down their, uh, their siege weapons. Whoa, that's a lot of guys. Yeah, focus down the siege weapons if you can. That's the most important thing, and the other thing is, like, try not to let them get uh, critical mass. Preferably, you're going to need some uh, bombards or onagers of your own to take out those onagers. Yes. Wow, he uh, he did a little number on me. I thought my army comes rather weak to the goths, just because they don't have that many cataphracts, because cataphracts are so expensive. Whoops. Yeah, I keep, uh, keep screwing up my gather points. <laughs> Okay, a couple more of these. And not bad. My economy is really good this game, that's nice. Uh, let's see. Looks like those bills just got confused. That's fine. Whoa, he is uh he's eating me for breakfast on that. 
Those girls, man, they're scary. Need to wait for my guys to mass up a bit, and then I can re-engage. Charge! But of course, don't mass your guys up too much. You still want to attack anyway. You don't want to uh, alleviate the uh, pressure on them if you can. Because yeah, sometimes you need to mass up your guys if they're just dying one at a time, but otherwise you want to keep the pressure on. Alright. GG. Very well played from everybody. A very fun, entertaining match, and I'm glad that this one went all the way through. Always a pleasure, of course. AW2 is one very, very fun game. Let's go check out the achievements, then. Woo! Largest army by one! Oh, yeah, Shevchenko is missing uh, siege engineers. Very important uh, upgrade for these uh, siege weapons, if your civilization has it. And getting that extra uh, extra one range allows you to get the first hit, and with Honor Wars, that is crucial. Crucial. Cool stuff, cool stuff. Yeah, Lucky J34 doing work, definitely. Really, everybody put in uh, put in one hell of a fight. I mean, like, especially like Merlin the Wizard, man. Like he was really he was really just trying to defend this as hard as he could. Woo! Most trade profit. Still needed more though. That's a strong that's a strong eco. I have been out advanced though, Shevchenko, a master of the fast castle age. But I will get you next time. Yes, most villagers though. Yeah, see, see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, it's all in the vills, guys. That's the most important thing you could do to improve your game. Go spotta. Could probably use more more villagers. Like, tack on like 40 more and we're good. Uh, go spotta. That will allow him to mass more guys. Like, you saw how much work he did when he got that force of huskarls out. What if he could produce more Huskarls? Well, starts with more villagers. He gets more Huskarls, he wins his side, you know, then I, I scream like a little girl and I, and I run away. So, more villagers, uh, more villages, more villages. It, it can be hard to remember, of course, but that's the most important thing. Uh, it really, really makes the difference. Having a strong eco allows you to have a strong military and make a difference. It really does. The most important thing in AoE 2 is just getting the whole, uh, the whole villager thing down. You need 100 plus. And you want to get that goal ASAP, so just keep that in mind. Alright, thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, I appreciate the support, and I hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed playing this match. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like rating, of course. Always appreciate that, and feel free to leave any comments below. I do make sure to read all of them, even if I don't get to respond to all of them. And, you know, I do live stream weekly, of course, so I would love to see you at the live stream. So don't forget to check out my Twitch TV page, as well as my Facebook pages and Twitter pages. I will always make an announcement before I live stream, so if you follow me on Facebook, you won't miss any of that. So anyway, as usual, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate it, and I will see you all in the next video.